There are four texts I want to deposit in your spirit, and I want you to look for the commonality in them. Proverbs 11:25, the liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Psalm 92, 13 and 14. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Yeah. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Just let me tell you something. Someone said about uh, somebody they're getting older. Everybody's getting older. You're not going to control that. The only thing you can control is how you're going to serve Jesus when you are older. And I got news for you and news for the devil. There'll never be one day in my life that I was, I was more on fire in the past than I am today. I'm as enthused for Jesus than I've ever been. Hallelujah. And I'm excited to tell you it doesn't matter what age that I see on the calendar. All that matters is in my heart, I'm a young, powerful, excited young man ready to kick the devil right in the rear. Come on now, somebody. <laughs> and they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Mm. Proverbs 13 and 4. The soul of the slugger desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Mm. Proverbs 11, 24 and 25. I hope you're smart enough to see the theme coming on. There is he that scatters yet increases. There is he that withholds more than is needed and tends to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that waters shall himself be watered also. As we look at the year 2019, the year of increase, the Lord said in my spirit, and I had to just think, okay, God, I know I'm hearing from you. I was praying over the church. And he said to me, um, you know, he said, skinny churches can't be trusted. Hey, we ain't that kind of church. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. So I want you to turn to someone, look them in the eye and say, it's time to put some meat on your bones. Tell them. <laughs> hallelujah. Wow. It feels good in the house this morning. Well, I love each and every one of you. Lift your hands high to the Lord and invite his word to come alive in your heart. Everybody, one more time. Oh, God, I thank you that you're in this place. And I thank you that the word of God is real. And it's going to come alive in us in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord Jesus the best shout of praise we've given him. Hallelujah. You may be seated. When I came to Richmond, some of you will remember uh, the Palladium item when it was, you know, a hot, a hot thing. Everybody read every day, and it was a big paper. And, and there, I, I wrote articles for it a lot and, and all the things that, you know, and it was a very, very um, thing that we went to. is before the Internet and all that good stuff accomplished back in 1988. There was an article. Some of you knew a man named Dave Kessler. How many know him? He uh, had a, a round face and he had a white beard and he wrote an article about recipes and he talked about like Amish recipe it was real food it was like fried chicken and macaroni and cheese and apple pie and baked beans it, it was real food that you could sink your teeth into and the 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 title each week of his article was Skinny Cooks Can't Be Trusted. And it's like these skinny cooks trying to tell you that it's good food and you're thinking, hmm, you better taste a little bit of your own medicine. Come on, somebody. And when the Bible speaks of the word fat, it's not talking about blubbery or gluttonous, but it's talking about being strong and powerful and flourishing. Did you hear me? It's talking about a soul that is rich, 
A soul that is absolutely strong and healthy and stable and viable. You need to reckon with it. It is bold. It is robust. I fear that there is a church that has found its way to the top here in America and they've got a lot of great things going on but the issue is they are skinny and they're not fat enough they lack the proper nourishment to ever go to the enemy's camp with boldness and authority and say to the devil you're gonna listen up right here sir you have taken some things that belongs to me and I come to make a demand that you let them go in Jesus name. Jesus said that upon this rock, ooh, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The problem with some Christians is that they spend way too much time in conversation with the devil. And I am one pastor that is absolutely incensed at this reality that some of you in this house today, you have given prey and you have become a, a punching bag for the enemy. And he just waltzes right in all arrogant and cocky and just comes and acts like he has his rights and entitlement to anything that belongs to you. And I got news for you. When you were bought with the blood of Jesus, you were paid for with the highest price of all. And you have rights and you have authority and you're not skinny anymore, but you are fat and strong and powerful and you have the authority to say, read my lips, devil. The answer to you is no. Let me tell you something about the devil. He thinks he's Moby Dick. But in fact, he's just Nemo. Somebody will write that one down. Post that on your thing this afternoon. Pastor said the devil thinks he's Moby Dick, but the reality is he's just Nemo. But as long as he can continue to convince you that he's got some kind of stronghold on you, I am tired of God's people falling under the spell of a lying dog thief devil and they forget who they are in Christ. And all of a sudden we have become this kind of shadow of somebody that used to be. And today I serve notice that Maria Lighthouse is not that kind of church. We are the kind of church that is strong and powerful and bold and anointed and we demonstrate with our lives that Jesus is real. It is a time to take a praise break right up in here now. And could you jump to your feet and could you give the Lord a shout of victory? Hallelujah. You recall when Pharaoh had his dream and no one could interpret it that Joseph was brought. It was the dream that in Genesis chapter 41, 18, here's what he said. He said, I saw seven cows come out of the river and they were handsome and they were good looking and they were fat and they fed in the meadow. Seven fat, plump, wonderful, meaty cows. Then he said, in my dream, I saw seven scrawny, skinny, gaunt, poor, very ugly little cows. They come up. I've never seen an ugly, skinny cow like this in all of Egypt. And they ate the fat ones. And what Joseph interpreted was there's going to be seven wonderful years when there will be plenty in the land, followed by seven years of famine. The fat, listen, the fat cows represented more than enough. When was the last time that you had more joy than you absolutely needed and you can give something away to somebody else? So when was the last time you had so much confidence, so much peace, 
so much satisfaction in Jesus that you had enough in your cup that spilled over to the saucer and you could, you could make an impact on somebody else. We've got to get past this mentality. I just want enough to survive. I just want enough for me. I just want enough that I can make it. No, you have got to have enough meat and sustenance on your life and in your bones and in your spirit that when you walk into the room, something's going to shift. Something's going to change. Come on, somebody. You have the authority. You have the ability to change the atmosphere in your family to change the atmosphere at the Christmas dinner at the reunion this summer people are talking about all their drama and you walk in and all of a sudden something makes them be hushed and be quiet and you just allow Jesus to permeate the whole atmosphere and something goes from chaos to peace you gotta have enough in you to give something away come on somebody that's called an increase that's called success that's called prosperity you have a enough to give into somebody else. I tell you, the Word of God says that God's people in Daniel 11 and 28 should be strong and they should do exploits. It talks about in Daniel 11, 32 that we are not weak, but we are powerful and we are mighty. Church, I want to inspire you and encourage you today. It is time that as the church of the living God, we begin once again to flex our muscles. You see those little scrawny boys and they've been skinny all their life and they start joining sports and then um, they start doing push-ups and they exercise and in the weight room and all of a sudden every time you see them they're doing this. They're walking around you know in a mirror and they, can't, they walk by a window. Some of us have been Steve Urkels for too long, 90 pound weaklings. Did I do that? Come on now. It is high time that the church of the living God, wow. I want you to get this in your spirit. We've been skinny way too long, and skinny churches can't be trusted. We need to get the fat and the meat of God's powerful word in our lives, and we need once again to flex our muscles. And so when the devil comes marching in and trying to intimidate you, you go, watch this. Which way's the beach? Y'all never heard that? Tell me I just didn't make that up. You're going to the gun show. Ephesians 6.10, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You and I are created not to be weak, but to be strong. The day of Pentecost was coming, and Jesus said in Acts 1-8, You shall receive power, power, power to become my witnesses. I'm glad that you and I are a part of a mighty, powerful church. It is the church of the living God. We know who we are, and we're going to step out in authority. Ephesians 4 and 14 says that you should no longer be children. Toss to and fro with every wind of doctrine and fall in the trickery and the cunning of men. You and I need to understand that we have to have some power and some weight and some strength and some ability that we're not going to be tossed about with the wind of shifting doctrine and culture trying to tell us that we've been wrong all these years about biblical precepts and about doctrine and all of a sudden people that you've stood on something all your life and someone's questioned it and someone's talked you out of it what's wrong with you you're too skinny you know some Christians are anorexic Paul said, I try to feed you with meat. I try to give you, my dad would say after he was sick, I think I'm good enough to sit up and take some nourishment. He said, I try to feed you with real food, but you would not take it. And so I continue, listen to me. I continue to have to bottle feed you. So you are not able to stand. Listen, the reality is that there are people in the house of God that it is, listen, with all my love, I say it's time that we put away childish things and, and we grow up. There's a time for milk and there's a time for the bottle and there's a time for the passy. Uh huh. There's a time for uh, the little Gerber jars with the little spoons with rubber on them. 
because you ain't got no teeth. Come on. And there's a time for all that. But then if that child is 12 and 18 and 32 and still having to eat that kind of diet, it's sick. It has urgent needs. It's not healthy. It did not grow up. I want you to be able to look in the mirror at the end of this year, at the end of the year of increase, and say, I'm not the same person that I was at the beginning of 2019. I grew in some area. I expanded. I had increased. I threw that sin away. I got rid of that habit. I got rid of that nasty attitude. I stopped being critical. I stopped gossiping. I stopped having a bad, a bad way of looking at life. I did some changing. I did some growing up, Paul said. When I was a child, I thought as a child. I understood as a child. I spoke as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. It's time that we get some meat on our bones. Some Christians are anorexic. They just refuse to eat. They're just, you, you can't feed them. I've tried over and over and over and over. Every Sunday, I've tried to get some of you open up wide. Come on. Here comes the flames. Choo, 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 choo. And by the time I get there, you close your mouth. Mm -hmm. And no wonder the devil walks in with every lie, deception, and vile, cunning words. And you fall to it, pray to it. You come victim to it all the time. And you don't see who you are in Christ. It's because you're anorexic. Then there are some Christians. I've seen you here. You're bulimic. You eat, but you purge it out. Some of you are getting fed today, but if you don't, if you don't go ahead and follow through on this, you're just going to go out and you're going to purge it, and it's not going to do anything for you. You don't just hear the word; you've got to do the word. I was reminded of Ezekiel chapter 37. The Lord brought him over into a valley, and it, He said it was a valley of dry bones. There were many, many dry bones. Listen, you don't get any skinnier than dry bones. Come on, somebody. And he said to the Lord, I see this valley. You show me there's a valley of dry bones, and there are very many. And he heard the Lord say to him, can these dry bones live? And Ezekiel said, Lord, who you, who you asking? I don't know. You tell me. And then the Lord said, Ezekiel, here's what I'm going to do today. He, whoo -hoo, he said, prophesy to those dry bones and say, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Let me tell you something, church. There's nothing in this world more powerful than a sharp two-edged sword called the Word of God. Hallelujah. And when people hear the Word of God, faith grows. When people hear the Word of God, they get meat on their bones. When people listen and receive and respond and obey the Word of God, they act like they've just come out of the gym all buff. <laughs> come on now. And so I come by to announce to you today that skinny churches cannot be trusted. I want you to write down three things because it's time for Lighthouse to get fat. Hmm. Fat. F-A-T. Faithful. Ooh. The average American Christian, if he comes to church once a month, thinks he's faithful. There are CEOs, Christian Easter only Christians. Christmas Easter only. And they think if they come, listen, I promise you, there are people that will show up this Easter. I have not seen them since last Easter. And they'll come up, Pastor, hey, Pastor, I love you. Wow, praise God, it's good to see you. And in my mind, I want to squeeze their skinny, scrawny little necks. <laughs> but I will restrain and I will give love and grace. I may not want to, but that's what I'll do. The reality is, who is going to pose any threat to the devil coming to church once in a while? That's not kingdom. That's not God. That's not building. That's not power. That is not faithfulness. When you get to heaven, 
Here's what he's going to say to you. Well done, good and faithful servant. 1 Corinthians 4, 2, it is required in stewards that we are found faithful. Faithful. You make up your mind that it doesn't matter what life does to you, what people say about you, how unfair it might seem, you are going to remain faithful. When you want to quit, you won't quit because you are going to be faithful. When you want to get mad, pout, and have a fit, you are not going to do so. You're going to be mature and deal with it in a biblical, godly manner and remain faithful. Take heed that no one take your crown. And there is in this world a thief, and he's walking around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And I promise you, you're on his hit list. You're on his menu. He wants to devour you and damn you and your church and your family to hell forever. And he'll do so if you remain skinny and if you remain anemic and if you remain weak. It's time to get some fat on your bones. And it begins with being faithful. Hey, available. Whew. Someone sung an old gospel song, Lord, I'm available to you. There is a word that says in, in 2 Timothy 4 and 2 that we are to be instant, in season, and out of season. When is it okay to get too busy to do things for the Lord? When is your schedule it's more important than his schedule? When, have you, when does it say in the Bible, where does it say that you have a right to say to the Lord, uh, no, I don't want time for you. No, I know you need something of me. I know you've asked the pastor to speak to me and give me an assignment and ask me to do something in ministry. But no, I can't. No, I can't. I'm not going to. Um, there's nowhere in the word of God that says you say no to your pastor. I have a pastor, and I will always tell him yes. He calls me, and he'll say, do this, do that, check on this, take care of this, do that, Pastor Don Gifford. And I'll say, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. I'll begin right away, sir. You say, well, no one ever asked me to do anything. It's probably because we think you're going to say no, because no one likes rejection. You just need to make up your mind. My answer is yes. So just go ahead and practice because some of you have never used the Y word uh, to the Lord. We're going to try it on the count of three. Just say, yes, Lord. Are you ready? Because I'm looking for all of you that are going to not do this. And the problem is if you can't because you're too skinny. One, two, three. Yes, Lord. He's looking for someone to say yes. My answer will be yes. I need to be available. Lord, if you need somebody to, to bring uh, something to someone, if you need someone to bless someone, if you need someone to take care of something to church, if you need someone to witness, you need someone to tell about your great love, my answer is yes. And the, and, the, and the problem is the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few because no one's telling him yes anymore. Come on, somebody. Isaiah said, yes, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And he asked me, who shall we go? Who shall go for us? And who shall we send? He said, here am I, send me. Yes, I'm available. I'm available to help at Easter. I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, there's something in my throat called the Holy Ghost anointing. <clears throat> I'm available to not let everybody else do their part. I'm going to do my part. I'm available. God, use me. Don't just use somebody else. I'm ready. I'll do whatever you, you ask me to do, and I'll do with joy and gladness. Faithful, available, te teachable. Woo. Some of us struggle with just being a good old-fashioned know-it-all. <laughs> Nobody can tell me nothing. I don't need to hear what you have to say, Pastor. Um, I don't know why I came today, but I sure ain't listening to anything you've got to offer up. And if I do listen, I'm going to let it go in one ear and out the other. Because, you know, I'm fine. Thank you. All this stuff you're preaching, I'm sure somebody needs it, but it ain't me. Uh-huh. Because all you in the back, you're getting double portion today because what happens in the front, they don't want it. They shovel it back. 
They don't want it. They shovel it back. They don't want it. They shovel it back. And you get it because there's nobody behind you to shovel it back to. We've got to make up our minds, church, that we've got to have the Word of God alive, and we have to have a teachable spirit. We've got to be able to take correction. We've got to be able to, say some, to let somebody say, hey, there's a blind spot in your life. Here's what Proverbs says. In Proverbs 1 and 2, it says, take wisdom and know it and have understanding and perception and put value in understanding. Verse 2 and verse 3, to receive instruction, to have wisdom, to have judgment and equality, to give prudence to the simple, the young, knowledge and discretion, a wise man. Verse 5, a wise man will hear an increase in learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but the fool, turn to someone and say, I ain't no fool. Turn to someone else and say, my mama didn't raise no fool. Say, I don't ever say that because I got three sisters. I <laughs> I'm just told, come on. <laughs> but the fool despises wisdom and understanding. You know, there are people that I deal with, listen to me. They are so deeply bound in rebellion that they view correction as an attack. There are people sitting here today. You would gladly let me bring correction to your life because you know I want you to win. Could you raise your hand? Let's all six raise our hands. But then there are others. If I was to say to you, hey, let me talk to you about this. I've noticed and observed, and I've been praying for you, and the Lord is wanting me to address something in you, and we're going to get better in this. You would resent that so much, I probably would never see you again. You would turn your back on in rebellion because you're so ate up in your stubbornness. And you're skinny and you're not teachable. There are people sitting here today that I have got up in your grill. I mean, and it was not pretty. I mean, it was game on. And I laid into you with Holy Ghost correction. And you are here, and I honor you, and I respect you. Because you took it like a man and because you knew there was a coach who loves you and wants you to get better. You didn't get pouty about it. You didn't get resentful about it. You said, that man must love me a lot. Whenever my pastor, when I was growing up, my dad and my other pastor, Pastor Fo, would correct me. I, wouldn't, I would feel like, yeah, it hurt my feelings, but I'm going to tell you something. I could tell you one thing. That man must love me a lot. To whom the Father loves, he chastens. We've got to have a teachable spirit, everybody. I want you to stand with me. And when you get to your feet, let's let out a roar of praise for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Come on now. Hallelujah. Woo! The joy of the Lord is our strength. Oh, I've talked about three things this morning. If you'll stay on your feet, which area do you need help in? Which area do you need nourishment in? Is it faithfulness? Is it just you've grown a little unreliable? Yeah. Just a little where you can't be dependent on as much as you should. You're not faithful. And you know you need to get faithful. You know God's telling you to get faithful. And the day you say, I'm going to come to church more, you'll have a flat tire the day you walk out of the door. Your car won't work. The phone, the phone starts ringing. You and your wife will have a, a spat. The kids won't feel good. You'll have a headache. The day you declare, I'm going to be faithful, is the day the devil gets real nervous. Faithful. Faithful. Available. Are you too busy in your own life to do something about his life? 
I know we're all busy. Oh, we're all busy. We get, everybody's busy. But I've always wondered why people can still figure out how to do something for God and they're just as busy as everybody else and they go the extra mile. It's not a schedule problem. It's a heart issue. I found out a long time ago when you want to do something bad enough, you'll, you'll figure out how, how to do it. Come on. You got to be like, I'm busy right now. I am, I've been busy for the last 36 minutes preaching my behind off. But if my wife goes like this to me, I just have to say, time out just a minute. What do you need, baby? Did you want to kiss again? Oh, my goodness. You and you. Okay, if I must. I took time for something that I love and enjoy. God's work is not unreasonable. It's not some laborious, horrible thing. Well, I've got to work at the church. I've got to sing. I've got to teach. I've got to be a greeter. I've got to I just. No, you get to. It's an honor to serve the Lord. And what about this one? Teachable. Hmm. You've been resentful maybe of me or the teaching of God's word or the word in general. I teach you about tithing and giving, and you just don't like that. And you cop an attitude about it. That says a lot about what's in our hearts, doesn't it? We have to be. We have to say, okay, God, teach me. I want to learn from your word. How many of you can just say, Pastor, and this is not the altar call right here. I'm going to do that in just a moment. I'm going to pray for people today. But how many would say, Pastor, uh, I, I, this word just meant a lot to me today. I really needed something in this word. Could you lift up your hand and lift a shout up to the Lord and tell him thank you for the word today. Come on. Let's thank him for the word. Let's thank him. My sele- my, I've had my last skinny day. I want to, listen, I want to be pastoring the church that when the devil tries to pull his nonsense in this town I'll speak up as a spokesman and say hey lighthouse forbids you no take that mess down the road I'm tired of prostitution and drug dealers and crime and violence and all that mess ruling and running roughshod over Richmond, Indiana and our communities. I'm sick of it, and it's time that we flex our muscles and we say enough. Enough. Today, I'm going to walk in divine demonstration. If you are sick, I'm going to lay my hands on you and anoint you with oil, and you will be healed. Listen, the service is far from over. Please. It always concerns me that when I get people moving, they think that's cold to leave. Listen, if you've been to Lighthouse more than once, you know that nobody has ever in the history of this church left before noon. That is blasphemous. And we hardly ever leave before 1230 because we ain't that kind of church. <laughs> I mean, you ever eat a meal with a skinny person, a couple little bites, they're done? I mean, a person that's less than skinny, I mean, they're going to be there a while. We have to taste and see that the Lord is good. Don't push the plate aside and say, oh, I got enough. No. There's never too much. You've got to get as much of Jesus as you can. If you're here today and you're struggling in finances, I'm going to pray for you and God's going to supply for you. And you're going to begin to walk in abundance and not lack. If you're here today and you're tormented in your spirit, you can't get over something. Something's been really gnawing at you. Today, peace is going to come. So as we begin to sing, if you need prayer for anything in your life and you want today to be a turning point, I want you to come forward, okay? Amen.